U right here is probably the hardest for most people to learn. Uh, it's, it's, it's a little bit more difficult. But if you can learn these, if you can learn the alphabet, if you can learn the vowels, and if you can learn the diphthongs, you'll be on your way. Uh, now, if you don't want to learn the vowels, and if you don't want to learn the alphabet, and you don't want to learn the diphthongs, there's not a lot you're going to get out of this class. <laughs> because you really got to get those down to be able to, uh, to move on. All right, let's see. What else do I want to talk about here before we move on? Yeah. Uh, yes? Are you saying <clears throat> epsilon, upsilon is the U, U like in Europe or Europa or something like that, and O or Omicron, upsilon is U? Yeah, so this is U. Like That's not U up there. It's U. It's, it's like... It's not you, it's, it's ooh, it's, it's, it's not the same, but it's, it's close to the same. It's like E. Uh, it's like, uh, like feud, like, uh, or the word Europa, E-U-R-O-P-A, Europa. Not really, not really. It's very close, but not really. Uh, Russell, what do you think? What, what, what? I've heard it described as trying to say "Hey you" without saying the the H and the Y. Hey you, hey you. Hey you. That's good. That's good. Okay. You. It's like, but you don't really say the A part. It's, it's you. <laughs> so his book says soup on the bottom and feud on the top, but you said fuse. And I guess maybe yes, my, te my Texan sounds feud. like feud. Feud. <laughs> well, I'm from Alabama, it's which is feud. worse. But anyway, <laughs> feud and ooh, Soup. like food. Okay. I think I can distinguish them between two O's, make it a little easier for me. Okay. Jeremy, what would you say about that? Doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> this younger generation, <laughs> that's their answer to everything. It just doesn't really matter. Okay. All right, any, any questions about this so far? Anybody have any questions? Anything you would add, Russell, about the diphthongs you can think of? All right, thank you. Okay. All right, now I would encourage you to learn the diphthongs, learn the vowels, and learn the alphabet. Okay, now we're going to try to move into... We're going to try to get a little bit into two things tonight. I want to try to get you into a, a little bit of vocabulary. Uh, if you'll look on your handout, lesson three, vocabulary. There are several words there. And uh, the best way, I believe the best way to learn words are just to read the words. Uh, phonetically, pronounce the word. The first word there is the word blepo. Blepo. Then you have gnosko and grafo. Well, I don't want to get ahead of myself because I want to come back and explain what these words are in a few moments. Uh, in, in the study of the Greek, uh, just like in English, there are different parts of speech. And I want to begin tonight to talk about one of those parts of speech. Uh, just like in English, there are um, nouns and pronouns, there are adjectives, there are articles, uh, prepositions, and verbs, and adverbs, and conjunctions. Um, Greek also has a part of speech we call particles, and we may probably never get to that. But um, the two primary parts of speech that we want to deal with are verbs and nouns. And, and we might get, later on, we might get to talk a little bit about... Uh, uh, about the article. I think that might be something that might be of benefit to us. But I want to begin tonight to talk a little bit about the verb, the Greek verb system. Um, and, and I'm going to try to not move ahead too fast. I hope maybe you'll take down some notes as we, we go through together. And if you have questions, please feel free to stop me. If we need to go back uh, through something, please feel free to do that or ask me about that. Jeff, do you have extra handouts? Uh, let's see. I do. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. That's the easiest question I'll be asked okay. tonight. All right. Uh, the Greek language is a highly uh, inflected language. 
there are changes that uh, words undergo with a grammatical function in a sentence. Uh, the verbs have primarily two parts to the verb. There is the root part of the verb, or the, uh, sometimes we call it the stem, and there is the ending. Uh, the ending has been called uh, the affix. You'll notice on your uh, handout there, we have, uh, first of all, we have the stem, and then we have the affix. The affix is just the ending of the verb. There are really two parts, and if you can learn those two parts to every verb, you'll be in good shape. Um, the ending changes a lot. I read recently when doing some studying that uh, in, in the Greek language, uh, there are eight different endings for nouns, possible endings. There are 24 different endings for adjectives or prona and pronouns. And for verb, there are almost 500 different endings. Different, 500 different ways a verb can end. Now, because of that, it can sometimes be somewhat confusing. But we're not going to get into all of the, the more confusing parts. We're going to try to stay with the most basic part. The, the uh, stem, if you have a verb, let, let's look at a verb uh, on your outline there, on your handout. Uh, look at the word blepo there. The, the word blepo. Uh, blepo uh, can have many endings, but the stem will always stay the same. The word blepo means I see. I see. Uh, let me see if I can do a little work here that will help us. Okay, blepo. I see. Um, the ending is the omega. That is the ending. Uh, the stem is the The first part is, is the stem. No matter how often you have this verb, this part will always be the same. The stem will always stay the same. Um, the ending, the affix, will change. And the Greeks would sort out things uh, such as to, to define a verb or to explain a verb. They would short out, uh, sort out things like uh, who is doing the action. If this word is I see, uh, they, would raise, they would sort out things by who is seeing. Well, the ending here tells me that I see. Uh, they would sort out things by such as how many are seeing. Uh, how many, we call that what? What do we call that? Question how many in, in the English language? That's the number. Okay, you have, you have the, uh, the person. The person is I. The number is uh, how many. Uh, then they would ask questions like uh, whether the subject is doing the seeing or is the seeing being done to the subject. And then they would, would ask how the person sees the kind of action and how he views the fulfillment of it, what has happened. So there are many, many different ways that you would come to, to an ending. And these endings are called affixes, and sometimes they're called inflections. But the best way probably is just to remember the, the stem and the ending, or the root and the ending. And I want to raise five questions, and I, I want to encourage you to write these down as you think about, uh, think about this word blepo.